In this video, we solve problem number two from quiz number two for differential equations for the spring um, 2021 semester. Now, there were multiple versions of this quiz, um, so your problem number two may have been different. Um, all problem number twos from this quiz were Bernoulli DEs. Um, this is one of the Bernoulli DEs um, that was featured on the quiz. Uh, the problem statement says, find an explicit solution to the Bernoulli differential equation Hint, you will need to rearrange the equation algebraically in order to write the differential equation in standard form. So the first thing that we need to do whenever we're solving a Bernoulli DE is we want to write the DE in the following form. We want to write it as the first derivative plus a function of the independent variable times the dependent variable equals a function of the independent variable times the dependent variable raised to the n, where n is not equal to zero and not equal to one. Because if n is equal to zero, well, then it's just a first order linear um, ODE. And if n is equal to one, then it happens to be a separable DE. It's also first order linear in that case because you could move the term over to the other side. Um, but if n is not equal to zero or one, we're going to use the Bernoulli method. So we have this and we wanna write it in this form. Now. The first thing that I notice is that I don't have a coefficient of one in front of the dy dx. So I would divide every term in the differential equation by um, x times y, and that will get the dy dx isolated, or almost isolated, it's, it's got a coefficient of one. And here, one of the y's will reduce, and now we have y over x. But I don't want to write it as y over x. I want to write it as a function of x times y. So I'll write it as a 1 over x times y. And then over here, the x is reduced. And then we have 32 divided by y. Or if you prefer, you can bring that y up to the numerator, call that y to the negative 1. And then this fits this form. Um, here, n is equal to negative 1. And we have a Bernoulli differential equation. Oops. It's a little bit hard to see where the R, there's an R and there's an N. Um, there we go. So we've got the derivative plus a function of X times Y plus equals a function of X times Y to the Nth where N is negative one. Okay, so the way we solve the Bernoulli equation is we always make a substitution. And um, that substitution is this, we're going to let Y or excuse me, U equal Y to the one minus N and then compute the derivative. In our case, n is negative one. So we have y to the one minus a negative one or a one plus one, which is two. Then you want to compute the derivative of u with respect to this independent variable. Well, the derivative of u with respect to x is the derivative of this with respect to y first, so just 2y by the power rule, times the derivative of the inside, which is dy dx by the chain rule. Or you can think of that as implicit differentiation. Either way, you're just taking the derivative of that with respect to y, and then you multiply by dy dx. Then in order to write this differential equation um, in, as a first order linear ordinary differential equation in the variable u, we want to multiply this equation in this form. So if I want to label this in some way, I'll call that de star. You want to multiply de star by 2y. And then when you do, this first term will be 2y times dy dx, so it will become or it will be equal to uh, du dx after we have multiplied um, by 2y. And of course, you don't want to just multiply by 2y there. You want to multiply by 2y all the way across the equation. So let's do that. So you have dy dx plus one over x times y. Actually, I should have put the plus way out there. Um, equals 32 times y to the negative one. 
Now we're multiplying this guy by 2y and this guy by 2y and this guy by 2y. And y to the first times y to the negative 1. That's like a y in the denominator and a y in the numerator. Those reduce. You could also add the exponents. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So y to the 0 is 1. Um, and then over here, this piece is du dx by design. It's the same as that. And then here we've got a y to the first times a y to the first. So it's going to be a y squared. And y squared is u. And that's multiplied by a function 2 over 1, 2 times 1 over x, which is 2 over x. And then on the right hand side, we happen to have a 64. <coughs> so we multiplied the differential equation by 2y. Um, and then we simplified and write the DE as a first order linear ODE and U. That's our new variable. I'm going to label this one DE double star. Then once you have this written as a first order linear differential equation in U, you can solve it by separating the variables if it's separable, um, or if it's not separable, we'll use an integrating factor. Um, this one is not separable, so we would use an integrating factor. Okay, so the way we do that is we identify P of X and we compute its antiderivative. And then E to that power um, will be just an infinite family of integrating factors. We only want one of them. So we'll choose the constant of integration to be zero and so on. So we've got P of X is two over X. The antiderivative of two over X is two times the natural log of the absolute value of X plus C. We can bring that two inside. This is the same as the natural log of the absolute value of X squared plus C. Absolute value of X squared is just the same as X squared. We don't need infinitely many integrating factors, so we're going to choose um, c equals zero. And then we define the integrating factor to be e to this power. You can use if or you can use mu of x. Either way is fine. And the logarithmic function and the exponential function undo each other, and you just end up with x squared. And that will work as long as x is um, strictly greater than 0, or actually not strictly greater than 0, as, um, as long as x is not 0, because the log um, would be undefined if x were 0. But the rest of the time, it's fine. <coughs> OK, so now we've got our integrating factor. Um, so that means we need to take this differential equation in this form and multiply by the integrating factor. When we do, the left-hand side will be the derivative of u times the integrating factor, provided that we haven't made any anti-differentiation or algebra mistakes. So I have du dx plus 2 over x times u equals 64. And we're going to multiply everything by x squared. And of course, one of the x's will reduce. And we can simplify this. This is x squared times du dx plus 2x times u equals 64x squared. And then if we've done everything correctly, this should be the derivative with respect to x of u times the integrating factor of x squared. So we multiply by the integrating factor and we simplify. And then when we do that, we say, let's recognize or check that the left-hand side of our equation 
is the derivative with respect to x of u times the integrating factor. If we've done everything correctly, that should be that. Let's check it out. This is a function of x times a function of x. And we're using, we're taking the derivative of a product, so we'd have to use the product rule. According to the product rule, the derivative with respect to x of this product is the derivative of the first times the second, so that's right there, plus, we have to add the derivative of the second times the first. Derivative of this piece is 2x, first is, is u. So that checks out. Um, uh, this, the result of the product rule for this is right here. So now we're just two steps away from getting u by itself. Um, the way we do that is we undo all of the operations that are there. This says take u, multiply it by x squared, and then take the derivative. In order to get rid of the derivative, we need to anti-differentiate both sides with respect to x. So we'll have u times the integrating factor equals the antiderivative of 64x squared. Just add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Don't forget to add your constant of integration. And then we'll take all of these terms and divide by x squared. And so what we get is u equals 64 over three times x plus c over x squared. And the reason we're dividing by x squared is because we're trying to isolate u. We're trying to figure out what u is, and this is what u is. <coughs> Excuse me. OK. Now, u is just something that we made up so that we could solve this problem. Um, u was equal to y squared. Um, when we let u equal y squared, we were able to write the differential equation as a first order linear equation in u and then solve it. So now that we've solved it, we know what u has to be. Or in other words, we know what y squared has to be. We're really interested in y. We want the function y that satisfies the original differential equation. So in order to get y, we need to back substitute. So we'll replace u with y squared because that's what u actually is. In general, you're going to replace it with y to the one minus n. And then you want to undo this operation. Now, in general, you can just raise both sides to the reciprocal power. So if this is the second power, I would raise both sides to the one half power. But since it's a squaring function, um, we tend to think of it in terms of the square root. And actually, we would end up with the two functions. We have a plus or minus there. y equals plus or minus the square root of 64 over 3 times x plus c over x squared, where c is some particular constant. And of course, this will work on um, an interval where x is not equal to 0. Now, um, they did not give us an initial condition. All we know is that x can't be 0 from this. Um, and we can also tell that x can't be 0 because of this piece right here. Um, so you can choose any interval that doesn't include zero, and we want a, the largest possible interval. So you could either use negative infinity to zero or zero to infinity. You just have to pick one, because when we talk about solutions to a differential equation, we're always talking about a solution on a single interval, not a union of intervals. So we solve for y, and we state the um, family of solutions. It's not quite a general solution because we had a nonlinear differential equation. There, there's no guarantee that this is a general solution. Um, want the family of solutions um, on the maximal interval of existence i. And actually, either one of those would be fine. So 
Okay, so that's how we solve a Bernoulli equation, guys. Just as a quick re review, we write the differential equation in standard form by just getting that coefficient of dy dx as one, and then writing this as a plus a function of x times y equals a function of x times y to the n, where n is not equal to zero or one. Then we let u equal y to the one minus n. We compute the derivative of u by the chain rule or um, implicit differentiation if you prefer. But implicit differentiation is just the chain rule really. And then we look at this and we say, I want this first term to be this. So the piece that's missing is the 2y. So we multiply this differential equation by 2y. We simplify and it turns out every time we do that, we're gonna end up with a first order linear differential equation in u. We solve that with the integrating factor. So we identify p, we anti-differentiate, e to that power is the integrating factor. We multiply both sides by the integrating factor. And if we've done everything correctly, the left-hand side is the derivative of the dependent variable, in this case, u, times the integrating factor. So then we're two steps away from getting u by itself. In order to get rid of the derivative, we take the antiderivative. In order to get rid of the multiplication by x squared, we divide by x squared. We end up here, and then we back substitute, because this question was about y, it was not about u. y happens to be u squared, and then we solve for y. And then once we've solved for y, we have this, and we state a maximal interval of existence. And really we're just, when we're doing that, we're just looking for x values that won't work, either in the final solution or at some step in the method, like right here, we can't take the natural log of zero. Um, and then we're saying, okay, ruling out that x value, what's the largest interval possible that includes the x value in the initial condition? We didn't have an initial condition, so either this one or this one would work. But if we did have an initial condition, like let's say it said y of one equals seven, I would need to choose the interval that includes x equals one, because I know that y of one is supposed to be some value. So then I would choose this one. Or if it said y of negative three equals seven, x equals negative three is in this interval, so I'd choose that interval. 